Unprepared for the Greenbrier Classic? Not on our watch. Hey everyone, Marty Longhi here with Newswatch Sports. Tonight we begin with one of many course previews, all to be narrated by our own Dan Toth. Thanks, Marty. Over the next six days, we'll profile the historic old white course through the eyes and experience of Greenbrier Resort Golf Director Robert Harris. We begin with the first three holes. Robert, it's all yours. When the professionals get to the first tee, they'll have a hard time focusing on hitting the fairway because of the natural beauty of the Allegheny Mountains behind us. However, what they'll want to do is have the ball on the left side of the fairway with a driver or a three wood, 450 yards, but it's downhill. They'll need that to have a good angle into the green. When we reach the green, you'll see why that's so important. Such a premium on this first hole is this bunker that I'm standing in that's very deep. Where you are right now is where the toughest pin placements will be. The left side of the fairway will have access right into that pin. Any ball that's in the right rough or right side of the fairway will have to carry this bunker into a very difficult pin placement. Dan, this is number two, Hogsback. The riskiest shot that sets up the best second shot in the number two is right down Howard's Creek right behind me. We'll go to the green and you'll see why it's so important to place your tee shot down the right side. Most of the pro professionals will be hitting hybrids, maybe three woods off the tee. The feature of the green is a large ridge that runs down the middle of the green. For the player that places the ball to the right of center, this deep swale does not come into play, but the player that plays away from Howard's Creek gets left of center in the left rough. This big deep swale will make it very difficult to make birdie. The third hole in the old white course is called Bia Ritz. The strategy is to control the distance. It's a very long hole. The players will be hitting the three, four, five irons. Distance control is so important. When we reach the green, you'll see why. For the player does, doesn't have the right distance to get to that back pin placement, is, and the professionals will play to the back pin placement, the ball will feed down to the swale to my left, which is six feet below the back tier. Making birdie from there will be almost impossible. The yardage on the first three holes is a combined 1,066, covering a par four, four, and three. Robert will join us tomorrow for a look at racetrack, mounds, and lookout. Back to you, Marty. Hey everyone, Marty Longhi here with Sports. Let's get right back to our Greenbrier Classic previews. With holes 4, 5, and 6, we turn it over to Sports Director Dan Toth. Our hole-by-hole -hole coverage of the old white course continues today with a look at three more par fours. However, as Greenbrier Golf's Director Robert Harris explains, racetrack, mounds, and lookout each present unique challenges. The fourth hole in the old white course is called racetrack. The strategy is very simple. Go straight to the green. The course is, uh, the fairway is dissected with bunkers on both sides. Some players will probably hit a hybrid off the tee, but the more daring players will try to drive this short par four that plays under 400 yards long. The fifth hole in the old white is mounds, a very simple strategy for the shortest par four on the course. At only 344 yards, the premium is on placing your tee shot down the right side. Any shot that's left of center or in the left rough, you have to negotiate those mounds down by the green, and what should be a birdie hole for most players could turn into a disastrous hole. Left side of the mounds hole, number five on the old white course, is protected by these large mounds. Where I'm standing here, you're in the middle of the fairway, there's 35 feet of green to your left. Lots of cups can be put over there, difficult pin placements for the professionals to make birdie. At 344 yards, you'll probably see some professionals use a driver on this hole and try to drive the green. It's going to be an exciting hole to watch. The sixth hole in the all white is lookout. At 471 yards against the prevailing wind, the pros will be happy with a par here. Otherwise, the front nine will yield a lot of birdies. The drive on this hole has to avoid the fairway bunker and the players will be faced with a lie where the ball is a downhill setting and the ball above their feet. Very difficult to get the right line to the green. Be very challenging for the pros to get the ball close. These three holes feature 10 bunkers, five green side. Robert rejoins us tomorrow for a look at holes seven through nine that are known as Plateau, Ray Dan, and Punch Bowl. Marty, back to you. Our hole by hole coverage of the old white course continues today with perhaps the easiest stretch, holes seven through nine. Two par fours and a three. Some of the longer players may even be able to tee it high and let it fly to the green in one stroke every time. But as Greenbrier Director of Golf Robert Harris tells us, while aggression can reward a scorecard, it doesn't come without risk. The seventh on the old white course is Plateau. The challenge for, will be to make a decision on the tee. Driver, hybrid, iron. There are five fairway bunkers. The professional will have to make a decision what club he wants into this plateaued green. The challenge is the green, the plateaued green. Three distinct levels. Lower level, I'm up on the middle level, and there's a lower level on the back right. 
The architect describes this green as his twisted potato chip. The eighth hole, the old white, Redan, Scottish Fort, one way in. Otherwise, you travel over this bunker 20 feet deep over the dragon's teeth in front of you. The best shot is to let the ball hit the right side of the green in the entrance and let the ball feed to any pin placement anywhere on the green. The Redan will be one of the most spectacular holes to watch. These grandstands behind me will provide a great viewing point for all you fans. The ninth hole, the final hole in the front nine of the Old White, is Punch Bowl. A drive down the right side will leave an open shot into the green. At 404 yards, you'll see lots of birdies here. Robert turns our attention to the back nine tomorrow with a look at Principal's Nose, Meadow, and Long, holes 10 through 12. Our hole-by-hole -hole coverage of the historic White has reached the back nine. Today, Greenbrier Director of Golf Robert Harris gives us some insight on the Principal's Nose, Meadow, and Long the longest stretch of three holes on the course. Place your tee shot anywhere except directly behind the principal's nose and you'll have an open angle into the green. At 385 yards, it's a short hole. You're sure to see lots of birdies here. I'm standing on the bridge of the principal's nose. A drive in the middle of the fairway, the green will be hidden by this nose. Play to the right, you'll have a good angle. Play to the left, you'll have a good angle also. The 11th of the all white course is Meadow, 477 yards against the prevailing wind. The trick here is to cut the corner and avoid the bunker on the right side of the fairway. The putting green is fairly flat, so the pros will have a pretty good opportunity to make birdie here. It'll be their last opportunity before they get to the 18th. For the touring professional that does not cut the corner on hole number 11 on the old white, this bunker complicates the approach. It's not going to, the player's not going to hit into it, but it complicates the view, the depth perception. They'll have to make up their mind they have the right club. The 12th hole on the old white is simply called long. The players will have to deal with a cross bunker off the tee, the hell bunker down the middle of the fairway, a creek that cuts across the fairway, a large bound to the right of the green, and an undulating green. Other than that, it's just 568 yards, a simple hole. This is what the players will see for their second shot in the number 12 long at the Old White. They'll have to decide whether they want to carry the creek, try to hit the green in two, make an eagle, or lay up down the left side. They'll have to make those decisions based on their, where they stand in the rankings, where they, how they feel, how they're hitting the ball. Thanks, Robert. Tomorrow we skate through the Alps, squeeze into the Narrows, and escape to Eden, better known as holes 13 through 16. Marty, back to you. The field is set for the Greenbrier Classic. Hey, everyone, Marty Longy here with Sports. We'll get to the names in a couple minutes, but first, our hole-by-hole -hole previews continue with Sports Director Dan Toth. Eden, Alps, the Narrows. Sounds like a scene from a Norwegian ski resort. But for the best golfers in the world, this is where the tournament really begins. Holes 13 through 15 provide two par fours and a three, and plenty of chances to go low or high, depending on a player's shot-making ability. At 474 yards against the wind, the 13th of the Old White is very challenging. A ball played right of center will have to deal with this large Alps feature, and the possibility of a bogey or double bogey is very imminent. Don't let the 399 yards on the 14th narrows on the Old White fool you. The player that has the nerve to play the hybrid driver or maybe even a three wood off the tee will probably be rewarded with a birdie. Those that don't have the nerve or miscue a shot Expect disaster on this hole. When the players hole out on the 14th on the Old White, they'll begin the march back to the clubhouse in one of the most exciting stretch of holes in all of golf, including Amen Corner. The, behind me is Eden, the par 3 15th. It'll play to a 5 iron for most players, a good birdie opportunity for the skilled player, the player that has his nerves, a little miscue. You can see a, the leader make a bogey here. Just three holes remain, a par 4, 5, and finishing 3, a rarity in modern day golf. That should provide plenty of drama Sunday afternoon. We'll have a look through the eyes of Robert Harris tomorrow. Marty, back to you. In little more than a week, we will have the inaugural champion of the Greenbrier Classic. Friday, we found out the names. Tonight marks our final preview of the old white course. Tourney time keeps getting closer. And with more, here's Dan Toth. Six days, 18 holes, and it comes down to a cape, oaks, and short. Common names, challenging holes. One final time, let's head out to Old White and Director of Golf, Robert Harris. The 16th on the Old White is Cape, a dramatic hole, 270 yard carry over water. The player leading may have to use his nerve, his skill, his judgment to figure out which angle to take. For the player that bites off a lot off the tee, a very simple pitch into the green, a likely birdie. The player that plays conservative goes out to the left, a par or bogey may be in the works. 
Here we are in the landing area of the 17th, the par 5 Oaks. For the player that takes the nerve or has the nerve to play the tee shot close to the creek, this is the perspective to the green. The pop bunker on the left side of play and hopefully the dragon's teeth on the right are out of play. A possible eagle or birdie is very likely from this position. There's one feature about the 17th we haven't shown you yet and that's the runoff feature behind the green. The players will be very aware of it because any ball that goes long will collect down here. The shot back to the pin will be very difficult. And here we are on the home hole, the finishing hole for the Greenbrier Classic. I'm standing on the ridge that separates the back of the green to the front of the green. Remember, the player that gets on the right side of this ridge can make birdie. The other players may make bogey. From Jim Justice, our owner, and all of the Greenbrier family, we want you to see you here this next week. It's going to be exciting. The best players in the world come to West Virginia and to the Greenbrier. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a hole-by-hole -hole look at the Greenbrier's historic Old White. We'll see how the best golfers in the world fare on the course in less than a week. Many thanks to Director of Golf Robert Harris for his time and insight, as well as designer Charles Blair McDonald for providing such a gem in the heart of the Allegheny Mountains. We hope you've enjoyed our preview of the Classic. For all of us here at Newswatch Sports, I'm Dan Toth. Back to you, Marty.